Hi, this is Maggie. Today I wanted to look at the chart of Nikola Tesla. He's um, born in Serbia, Serbian born, um, June 28, 1856, and he is responsible for discovering the rotating magnetic field. Uh, the, guy, the guy, just a genius, uh, held more than 700 patents, and I was just kind of looking for signs of genius, and I did read his bio, and he saw a lot of visions. Very um, Neptunian that other other people couldn't see. I mean, he was on a whole different plane. And so I'm just going to sort of do an overview of his chart. And, um, oops, sorry. <laughs> So what I'm seeing are a lot of aspects to Neptune, the outer planets, and uh, so we'll start with his sun. He has the sun in Cancer, the moon in Libra, the moon in <coughs> Libra in the, uh, where is it? He has a stellium in Cancer. The moon's in Libra in the workhouse, and so is Mars, moon-Mars conjunction in Libra. So he was a good-looking guy. He is very um, sought after by everyone. But uh, I bet <coughs> the moon and Mars would, would make him a very, very attractive person. Um, so the sun, he has Taurus ascendant, so he had the ability to just make billions, but because he has such a strong 12th house, Pisces house, he wanted to give it, give it away to humanity, give it away for free. And basically, you know, some of his patents on energy, his ideas were, I think when Chase, you know, Chase found out he was going to give it away to humanity, which is very Piscean 12th house, um, you know, he took his idea so he could make money off of it, of course. Um, so I really appreciate the, the generosity and the humanitarian aspects of him. So he has, he has, so he has Taurus ascendant, so his ability to make money is just, as an inventor, you know, inventor, um, He also has Aries, you know, his, his ascendant is only two degrees Taurus, so it's an intercepted house with Aries. So he has Jupiter in Aries in the 12th house, which would really expand his, well, for one thing, it really expanded his psychic abilities. I mean, the guy was seeing um, flashes of light, which later turned into tongues of fire. He was only sleeping like two hours a day. And just, you know, uh, could taste and feel his visions. And those are all extremely Neptunian. <laughs> and he, all, he like had contact with the, with, with, I don't know, the outer planets or with other worlds. He was, you know, in Colorado Springs and contacting other worlds. And so he was ridiculed. He was ridiculed. Uh, you know, he was finally offered some consolation peace prize, but I think Edison got the Nobel Prize. But anyway, he, he won many, many awards and everything. But he ended up, you know, the pigeons were his best friends in, in Central Park or wherever. But <coughs> so his Neptune in Pisces is extremely extreme. Neptune is the ruler of Pisces, <coughs> excuse me, and he has it in his 12th house. So I believe that would be, and it's aspected a lot, but, you know, it's, it's, it's responsible for a lot of his visions and a lot of his, certainly his psychic ability, his intuition, his, you know, communication with other worlds. He was able to listen and hear it, you know, and taste it and smell it and just have these visions that nobody could really perceive how, you know, I mean, 
he was a genius, so I was kind of looking for genius in this chart. And what I, what I saw instead was all this uh, magnificent originality, having Aries, Jupiter and Aries, and this North Node in Aries in the 12th house, uh, responsible for his expanding his creative ideas and his originality and his genius. Uh, in the North Node, he was fated to make his mark as an ind individual uh, pioneer, pioneering, pioneering in his ideas um, and in his work, because it's supposed, um, you know, the Moon and Mars and Libra, and so Jupiter there just really expands, expands his creative ideas and he was he was meant to make his make his mark somehow through his personality and with Jupiter <coughs> Jupiter and Aries Jupiter rules Sagittarius so it would be higher ideals so he was very idealistic and just just the thought of giving everyone free electricity I mean it's very very philanthropic and you know and that that Again, it's Neptune and Pisces, you know? Um, Neptune and Pisces. So Neptune is, um, is in conjunct Mars. In, that just kind of means it's like, it's, it's hidden. It's, it's more than, I think, 160 degrees or something. But it's like the astrological wheel and then, you know, one, one behind, behind the horizon. Uh, so he, <coughs> so it's almost like he can't see how his Neptune is affecting other people, or he would see things, Libra would represent other people, so other people had a hard time perceiving what he was seeing. Um, and so and he, you know, he was a lot more comfortable in the other world other worlds say that in this world and trying to bring his ideas down to earth uh, you know because he was in all these other dimensions seeing this stuff um, I mean he visually saw the rotating magnetic field uh, when he was living in this times of fire you know electric electric energy land sleeping two hours a night and that is, that's very Neptunian. Um, so Neptune, I was looking for aspects to Neptune, and he has that in the 12th house, along with Aries in the 12th house. So um, bringing his higher, higher visions to reality through his invention, you know, expanding his invention, 700 patents, that would be uh, Jupiter and and the North Node in Aries in the 12th house, and wanting to give it away <laughs> is definitely Neptune in, um, Neptune in Pisces. And Pluto is right on his ascendant. So he has a lot of aspects to Neptune as well, making him, you know, sort of a visionary. Um, he has, he has, um, <coughs> Let's see, Uranus sextile, Uranus sextile Neptune is the one that especially jumped out at me. So the, they're both outer planets, and Uranus is spontaneous, electric, sudden, unexpected um, ideas. <laughs> ideas. And having that sextile to Neptune, it's almost like they were communicating, talking to each other. And he was like the receiver, receiving all these ideas from, from these outer planets. And they were just like in tune with each other because they're in harmonious flowing aspect. So from his Pisces water house in the 12th house to um, Uranus in Taurus, he was able to bring, because Taurus being an earth sign, in his first house, he was able to bring those down to earth and and Uranus is a sign of invention, inventiveness. It rules Aquarius. Um, and Aquarius rules invention, you know, is, is, is inventions um, and humanitarian.
So anyway, he was able to bring these higher ideal ideas and visions down to an earth, earthly plane because he did have Taurus and he had Pluto as well, right on the cusp. On his ascendant, Pluto was five degrees Taurus, so that uh, made him a very, very intense personality. Very intense personality colored him, a little Scorpio. Um, yeah, he, I believe he never married, but he was extremely attractive. and People were just drawn to him magnetically. Um, yeah, so the Uranus, <coughs> the Uranus Neptune transit, and there was another one as well. Um, oh, Pluto sextile Saturn. Yeah, Pluto sextile Saturn, and that's Pluto almost on his ascendant. Well, pretty much it is on his ascendant, five degrees in in uh, Taurus, Earth sign Taurus, on his ascendant. Sextile Saturn. Where's his Saturn? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me get Saturn. So Saturn's his third house of communication. That's Gemini's house. So his, his, his Neptune sextiling Saturn in his communication house, again, would be like a tuning fork because it's very psychic. It's in Pisces is a water house and it's, it's, it's in trying actually to, to uh, Cancer. So he has Venus, Saturn, and Mercury all in Cancer. Let me make sure Mercury. No, Mercury's in Gemini. Mercury's in Gemini, 28 degrees, so it's kind of cuspy, Cancer. So it just makes him extremely psychic because he has you know, the ruler, Pisces, and Venus is what you like. Saturn is an outer planet. So <laughs> it makes sense that he, you know, he was, he was communicating with with other worlds because he was very with these aspects it would be very otherworldly with a very strong uranus as, aspect aspecting neptune um neptune aspecting uranus pluto aspecting saturn um and those are those are easy flying positive aspects he did have the in conjunct um bringing his ideas down to, you know, trying to get him across to people. He had, probably had some trouble with that. Um, but all these planets and cancer made him especially even even more psychic and prone to visions and to, to seeing things. Um, so he saw a lot of things that weren't there to other people and he has Chiron up in the midheaven. He has um, Capricorn. Yeah, no, no planets up there, but he, that was his destiny in life was to, he did put his mark in the world through his invention and through his visions, his Neptunian visions. Um, yeah, so his son is 17 degrees 17 degrees Cancer. Let me see. No, it's water. Yeah. 17 degrees Cancer. So, yeah, he's. Looks like a very psychic chart to me, you know? So, I think a lot of his genius came from his extreme ability, psychic abilities to see beyond, <coughs> beyond the senses, beyond the, you know, ordinary world. And he was very comfortable in that sphere, in the outer spheres. And I believe he did probably hear, because of Gemini, his Mercury is in Gemini and it's right on the cusp of Cancer and it's aspected to, it's square, it's Mercury, the planet of communication, the ruler of Gemini, 
is in Gemini and it's square to Neptune. So that's like a direct line to, you know, to, to outer world or to, like, you know, psychic land, which you like to, to live in apparently. Um, yeah, so, so he, he did have a direct line and he's, he's responsible for the telephone and the TV, and just everything that we take for granted. Um, so Uranus, the sign, the planet of inventiveness is in his first house. And Pluto is in his first house in Taurus. So he, you know, he, he, he had the capability of making a lot of money. Uranus rules electricity as well. You know, it's, it's always described as sudden electrical, you know, ideas that hit you like lightning. And that, that would be Tesla. That would be Tesla and his ideas and his, uh, his ideas and his genius that, that he brought to the world. And I just love that, you know, his 12th house humanitarian, you know, Piscean quality, he wanted to very generously give it to everyone for free because that made sense to him. Um, yeah, so Moon Mars are in Libra in his workhouse. So he rubbed elbows with a lot of, you know, society people, but I don't know that he was all that into that. It is in his workhouse, um, and he was highly recognized in his field. And, you know, physicists today use his ideas, and he's just, uh, his ideas are being studied even today. So, yeah, pretty much everything is in, there's a stellium in Cancer, Waterhouse. You know, Neptune stands alone in, in Pisces. <coughs> Heavy 12th house influence, Pisces house. Um, and that's in conjunct, Neptune in Pisces in the 12th house is in conjunct to Mars in Libra. So he had trouble probably bringing his ideas to people in his work, trying to, had a hard time understanding his ideas, you know, because he was just way ahead of um, everyone, and, you know, <laughs> way ahead of everyone. So I believe that that made for a lot of his genius. Um, and I don't know his history or anything, of course, but, uh, very, very interesting, very interesting chart. He has, um, looks like a, a T-square, a conjunction between all those planets and cancer, um, which is deep water, very deep water, extreme sensitivity. Libra is the air sign, that's communication with people. Um, Aries, Aries. Jupiter was the inventiveness, the pioneering inventiveness, but it is in the 12th house. So he made his mark and then he wanted to give it away. So I think that's really cool um, because it wasn't all about money. With, well, it could have been all about money with Taurus Ascendant. I mean, they're great at making money. And they're all about material, you know, material goods and, you know, uh, yeah, but with Uranus there and Pluto, you know, those outer planets in his first house and Neptune and Pisces, he was, he was too busy communicating with the outer realms and seeing visions and everything to care that, all that much about the material world. And yeah, at one point I think he, you know, he was really struggling. So anyway, his ideas are just being studied to this day by physicists and um, he's just a fascinating, fascinating person. And I thought I would look at his chart to see what was going on with him. So I hope you enjoyed this. And if you do, please like and subscribe. Thank you.